Hey guys, Dr. Josh Hacks here along with Dr. Patrick Flynn. We've got a great episode for you today and we are live here. We're going to be talking about the 10 natural solutions to help you come overcome infertility and to naturally balance your hormones. And I brought in the expert in infertility and all things hormones, Dr. Patrick Flynn. In fact, he's been labeled the hormone whisperer by people all over the world and all over the country. And he has people fly, again, from all over the world to come see him that are struggling with infertility, hormone imbalance issues such as PCOS, severe menopausal symptoms, PMS, and a number of other hormone-related issues related to the thyroid, the adrenal glands. Mm -hmm. Dr. Patrick, hey. hey. Th thanks for having me. Awesome. Great to have you here today. So guys, we're going to be going over the top treatments and really what Dr. Patrick does with his patients in terms of the herbs, the essential oils, and the root causes of what actually causes infertility and hormonal issues like PCOS. And help us spread the message right now. You know, there are millions of people women and men, women especially, who are going to their doctor, getting medications, and they're not getting to the root cause of what's causing their problem. So take a minute right now, hey, punch your share button or like button or love button, help us spread this word. And also, hey, we'd love to start off the show by saying hey to you. Let us know the city you're from, the state you're from, the country you're from, and we'll give you a quick shout out here on Facebook Live before we dive into the actual root causes of addressing hormone imbalance in the body, especially in fertility. So, all right, we've got, uh, let's see, we've got Sharha, who just joined us from Malaysia. Hey, thanks for joining us here today. We've got Jeremy Rowland from Louisville, Kentucky. We've got Acel TG watching from Puerto Rico. Marie Tramall from beautiful California. Hey, Marie, thanks for joining us here today. We have Deb Brookshin from Wisconsin. Hey, hey Deb. Wisconsin. Good to see you. All right. We got another. I know you're from Green Bay, Green Bay, uh, Green Bay area. So especially if you're in Minnesota, Wisconsin, <laughs> Chicago, he's real close to you there. Um, and also we have uh, Bridget Faison watching from Cali. And uh, I got to mention here, someone saying, Dr. Patrick is a healer. Um, awesome. Yeah, that's a great compliment there. And Diana Jeffries is saying, hey, from Adelanto, California. Awesome. Hey, guys, thanks for joining us today. And thanks for everybody. I see a lot of people sharing this video here right now. All right, so let's talk about this, Dr. Patrick. Mm -hmm. One of your key ways of addressing hormone imbalance is through testing. And here's the truth. A lot of doctors today aren't doing the right type of testing to find out what's causing infertility, what's causing mm -hmm. hormone imbalance. Talk to us about the hormones you test for. And also, you mentioned something about estrogen earlier. Yeah, the sad part today is when people actually get their hormones tested, the, the key thing is it's incomplete. Mm -hmm. um, for example, uh, I'll ask women, I'll say, have you ever heard the hormone estrogen? And like, sure. And I, and I respond, go, that's why you're sick. Estrogen is really a term of multiple hormones. And they give you that kind of the deer in the headlight looks. So the, the, it's, and it's actually the hormone that dictates a woman's life. If you look when a woman's actually, a young lady has her cycle and develops into a woman, the, the only thing that really changes is her estrogen levels start to go at a much higher level. Yeah. But there's so many of them. And most women have never even had them tested properly. Okay, And that's the biggest thing. So it's incomplete testing. Because people come in and say, Doc, I've had some testing done. I'm like, really? Let me see it. And they maybe test one or two of them. And so you can't get a good complete picture of a woman's hormones unless you know of them. Okay, So that's the greatest place to start. Second, obviously, a little bit more known hormone is progesterone. Okay. Um, it's really key, especially when you get down to mental stress, but progesterone is probably the most drained hormone that women have. It's actually the number one cause of, for example, of miscarriage and when progesterone levels get low. Actually, if a woman actually has, you know, uh, gets pregnant and starts to, to bleed or, for example, they've had miscarriages in the past, they'll give them shots of synthetic progesterone that way. Wow. But I will really tell you, for example, one thing I think is key, especially for women, is cortisol. Okay? Mm -hmm. So... Now, they're wrong. there's more than these three hormones because that would be an incomplete test if you just did those. But when women actually just start to research those three things, when they're going through any hormonal change, from PMS to PCOS to, to infertility that way, it's got to start there. Now, that's a, that's a really good start, but that's still incomplete. Just understand, there's all of the array of hormones that's got to be tested, but even just number one, estrogens dictate what a woman's well, life well, is like. Well, talk to me about what are some of the different types of estrogens that people might get, get tested for? And then we have another question. Mm -hmm. Somebody wants to know what they should be tested for if they are not losing weight like they should. That's a question here from Drace. Well, actually, that's a big key. You know, when you, when you look actually at weight loss, start with your cortisol. Because there mm. is, a, there is yes. a tissue in our body 
there is a tissue in our body that makes a significant amount of hormone. It's called adipose tissue. Oh. So when women's hormones drop, guess what happens? The body says, I have to survive. And so what does it produce? Fat tissue. That's why when we get down to exercise, women can actually exercise every day. And if they're doing it wrong or doing it during the wrong times, guess what? Hormone levels drop and then fat tissue has to be produced for them to produce hormone. Wow. So cortisol is actually a wonderful one because if you would drain your adrenals, if you drain your progesterones, your body has to survive. Your body does what it does to actually survive every situation, even produce fat. Yeah, and if you're a person out there and you're one of those people, especially a woman, and you're out there exercising and you seem that it's you're not losing weight, mm -hmm. or maybe you're even gaining weight in mm -hmm. certain instances. It's because you're not exercising the right way during the right times of the month, which we're going to talk about yep. when we talk about exercise here in just a minute. So again, as Dr. Patrick's talking about, you want to do a full-on hormone panel. This is something he does with his company, Wellness Way. Mm -hmm. And uh, and again, you can check out, just Google search the hormone whisperer, Dr. Patrick Flynn online. You'll for, find information there on Google. So again... You want to do a complete panel yep. there. We know cortisol is one of those hormones we have to stay balanced. Now, talk about this. It was really interesting. We know the American Health Association oh. recently came out with this absurd recommendation that you got to get saturated fat out of your diet mm -hmm. and then basing disease or heart disease on cholesterol. Talk about why women who want to balance their hormones mm -hmm. and overcome infertility, mm -hmm. why they actually need cholesterol. Yep. Well, I'll give you a clinical example. So the other day, I had a 42-year-old woman come in, and she lost her cycle, and she thought she was actually going through menopause. Mm. Well, then I tested her proper hormones at LH and FSH, and it still showed that she still should be cyclic. Well, anyway, so then I said, well, let's run your lipid panel. She had a cholesterol level at 98. And now she was so excited when it came back because even her OB said, listen, that's fantastic. And I just about had a seizure, okay? Because every steroid hormone, let me say it again. This is every, huge. Every steroid hormone comes from cholesterol. So when the American Heart Association said that coconut oil and things like that were bad for you, they're actually going to drive women and male hormones down by teaching that. And I just about, you know, freaked. In a, in a, and, and we have a very good cardiovascular guy in our office. His name is Dr. Greg Abbott. He put out a great article about that way. And he said, hey, listen, he goes, listen, steroid hormones need, for example, cholesterol. And if we don't get cholesterol in our foods, guess what? It's going to be detrimental to hormone health that way. And do not lower your cholesterol. One of the worst things for female hormones is actually statin drugs. Oh, statin yeah. drugs. Do you know when I started practice 18 years ago? They never put women on statin drugs. They never did. It was in guys it was pretty common. That's why testosterone levels became so low. Yep. But but women today, and even one of the major side effects of statin drugs is lower hormones. But it's detrimental to women's health that way. Cholesterol is a key. So when you get a lipid panel done, your doctor's so excited that it's low, I'm freaking out. Oh, same here. Big time. You know, it's one of those things where again, people I, I don't know how, you know, the medical community doesn't understand this. Well, part of it is the pharmaceutical companies and their whole yeah. agenda. Yes. But again, think about how important this is. Cholesterol and proteins together are a big part of, those are your hormones mm -hmm. you're producing. And another point, 25% of your brain, your spinal cord, yep. your nervous system is made up of cholesterol. Yes. So if you have low cholesterol levels as men, that's going to equal low testosterone you have being weaker, lower sex drive, lower energy levels, and for women, very same thing. It's mm -hmm. lower sex drive, mm -hmm. infertility, hormone imbalance. You've got to get your cholesterol levels healthy, and we're going to talk about that more with food, but let's mention, what are a few foods that might support mm -hmm. healthy levels of cholesterol or some fats there? Well, my, two of my favorite, you know, eggs and avocados. There you go. It is. Um, we have this fallacy about eggs, and remember, if you even go back, uh, the American Heart Association is saying, Eggs are good, eggs are bad, eggs are good, eggs are bad. And it's based on their pharmaceutical influence that way. And two wonderful things that way that actually are essential to health. Now, they're on. People say, Doc, well, you're allergic to eggs. Well, then guess what? You know, find other sources that way. You need cholesterol. And there's one thing I want to say about saturated fats. It's kind of interesting. Our body, you know, people know a lot about polyunsaturated fats because of olive oil. But you understand that olive oil under room temperature is a liquid. Saturated fat under room temperature is actually solid. If we were actually made up of polyunsaturated fats, we'd melt, we'd melt during room temperature. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? They yeah. don't think of it that way. And, they're like, and then people start scratching their heads. Yes, saturated fats bind our cells together and keep us human. 
Do you understand? So a lot yeah. of people don't understand that. And I'm gonna throw a few others up here. Getting a little bit of animal fat is good. Yes, it is. You know, things like, whether it's tallow or chicken fat, you know, a lot of times I'll eat the organic chicken skin. Yes, yes. And the reason is it's full of collagen mm -hmm. and those healthy saturated fats. If it's a grass-fed, wild animal. So getting things like this, we'll put a little bit of coconut oil in there yes. uh, down here. Um, you know, these are things that can really benefit the body. Now let's jump into number three here. And by the way, hey, I know that uh, for yourself, Dr. Flynn, again, you have helped a lot of people with infertility, a mm -hmm. lot of celebrities. So if you want to know more about Dr. Patrick, just search the Hormone Whisper online, Dr. Patrick Flynn. You can find out more about him there. But we're going to talk about mental stress. And by the way, there are millions of people that don't know this truth. You know the number, of, I was shocked when I first opened my clinic, Dr. Patrick, and the number of women, young women, mm -hmm. in their 20s and 30s coming in with infertility, PCOS, mm -hmm. hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's disease, irritable bowels, I mean, just so many of these different health problems, I was absolutely shocked. And you know the reason was? They don't, they don't know these key things that we're actually teaching about today. So hey, take a minute right now, click the share button, the, the like button, help us spread this word mm -hmm. because more men and women need to know the truth about how to naturally heal their body. So let's talk about mental stress how important is this when it comes to balancing your hormones and overcoming infertility? Out of all these things, I believe number three is actually the key. Um, if you look at, for example, a kind of a funny thing, I always say, you know, who stresses out more, men or women? Women. Who causes the women the most stress? Men. men. Okay. <laughs> so men, this is not a joke. You can be one of the biggest contributors to your wife's illness. Now yeah. that's going to get a huge one because women by yeah. nature, the estrogens are very, estrogens are a very bonding hormone. Okay, testosterone is a very aggressive hormone. And what happens, and here's the big key, and this is the big difference. Our anabolic hormones, our hormones that come from our progesterone, estrogen, DHA, all the ones that way, guess what? They're not connected to cortisol. But guess what? Progesterone is. Progesterone converts into our stress hormones. So mental stress can deplete a woman's hormones faster in eating bad, mm. faster in exercising too much, faster than doing anything. This by far is, t right now, I can believe, and this is by lab testing, is the number one key to why women are sick today. Now, let me ask you this, Dr. Patrick. When you have a patient come in, mm -hmm. and they're having major emotional stress, yep. what are, I know you've got a lot of different remedies. What is one of those things that maybe you have them become conscious of or start doing mm -hmm. to deal with the stress and their husbands or yes. significant others? I'm going I'm to use, use a funny example. One of my doctors okay. is going to kill me on this. So we have wellness weight clinics all over the country. We have great doctors and stuff like that. And um, the cool thing about this is one of uh, uh, our Montana office, Dr. Samson Alex, I went out to their wedding. I have a picture of Alex when, when she was in her wedding just walk around with a bottle of California poppy because it's the most calming, relaxing, neurological calming herb. Helps us produce our very calming neurotransmitters very quickly. Yeah. So California poppy actually leaves our office on a regular basis so often because why? Because even a wedding, which is one of the most beautiful things, it was a gorgeous wedding. We had a blast out there. But the idea is this. It's stressful. And so it does create the nervous system calm really quickly. So California poppy has always been the one of the go-tos. I, mm -hmm. We have sometimes when women come in, they have such high anxiety. There's sometimes, as, as people know that our models, we don't guess, we test. But there's sometimes clinically that I had a woman come in just in tremors. And I put her back in, in my exam room. I gave her a, literally a tablespoon of California poppy every 15 minutes to calm down because mm. doing a lab on her actually would have been uh, uh, clinically irrelevant at that time. Then we got her to calm down, then guess what? Then we could continue our exam and our work on her. So great it, stuff. It, incredible thing. And actually, it's funny part is when people Google search it or look it up on WebMD, it's one of the most calming uh, and non-addictive herbs because once again, you can't overdose on it. It's water soluble, so if you took too much, you just pee it out. I love this. I'm going to write this down here. So we have California poppy. And then one other thing I want to mention, something I've done, Dr. Flynn, too, for patients, is I've had them do what I call a healing bath. One cup of Ooh. magnesium, Epsom salts, Epsom. 20 drops of lavender chamomile oil, oil, and just yep. lay in the tub for 20 minutes mm -hmm. soaking there. But I love it. Uh, that's a great, uh, great natural, holistic remedy there. Yep. And awesome. I see we got a lot of people sharing this. I think Maria, I saw just share this. Hey, thanks so much Thank for you. sharing this, liking this information. We're helping to spread the word about women's health and men's health here today, especially in regards to hormones. So let's talk about fatty acids here and the mm -hmm. importance of, what are the most important fatty acids or fat-rich foods that we need to be getting in our diet on a daily basis? Oils and nuts. Oils and nuts, by far. Because, because remember, hormones are lipid-soluble. 
they need carrier proteins, they actually need the fatty acids, and so it happens, oils and nuts are one of the best things foods on a regular basis that way. Um, macadamia nuts, by far, are one of the best that way. Cashews, walnuts, all high base fatty acids that way that actually give the building blocks. You know, we talk about building blocks with cholesterol, we need more than cholesterol, we also need the amino acid proteins. We also need the, the phospholipids to actually build it that way. So oils and nuts to me, for example, have done a wonderful job of giving people and giving women and men the tools to be able to build those hormones. Cool, awesome. I just wrote down four down here. We got yep. macadamia nuts, walnuts, flax seeds, also doing things like salmon can be great here, but getting these fatty acids, and of course we put avocado up here earlier. Mm -hmm. yep. Why is avocado so beneficial? Well, it has multiple things. See, what happens when you actually look at the liver, and we're gonna talk about this over here, but all hormones convert in the liver. So therefore, the glutathione that you get from the avocado helps the liver process everything and convert it, and also has methyl groups that change the estrogens from one form to the other. Wow. So those food groups are essential. That's why avocados should be a normal part of your diet on a regular basis. Yeah, and as, uh, as I know we both have said before, an avocado a day will keep the endocrinologist away, yes. okay, which is something you want. So anyway, so again, you can see here some of these foods you want to be getting in your diet on a daily basis. And listen, these are delicious. Macadamia nuts. Mm -hmm. I love that you know vanilla-like yes. flavor, doing macadamia nut butter yep. uh, with some with uh, some uh, celery sticks is great. All right, let's talk about exercise here. Now, this is one I think might surprise you guys a little bit. Let me actually jump back and say, did you hear everything he said about avocados? They help boost your glutathione levels. Mm -hmm. That's your body's master antioxidant. Powerful for anti-aging. Mm -hmm. All right, exercise. So mm -hmm. we're gonna get some haters on this one. Talk about, <laughs> so we're gonna talk about two types of exercise that are beneficial. Mm -hmm. Yes. Weight training and burst training. Yes. And then things like yoga and walking, or yoga, Pilates, bar, walking, things that are in those categories. There are certain times of the month mm -hmm. that women should be doing weight training or uh, burst training, and certain times they shouldn't be. Let, let's talk about when and when not to do those. Well, let's set, sta set stage for us. For male hormones, it's essential for guys to work out daily. And burst training is by far the best. Um, you can actually, I, I have some pro athletes come in and what happens is they're, they're, they're physically physiqued like crazy, but they push themselves beyond burst training and their testosterone levels drop down because they're causing so much destruction to their body. Okay. Now, Josh, it's kind of, kind of neat. You'll, you'll understand this a little bit more since you're married. Now, the one thing about a woman, when you look at exercise compared to a man, a man's testosterone levels are straight across all the time. Our testosterone levels stay, it, it will stay the same all month. When you got married, no one ever told you this. A woman's hormones change four times a month. That means it affects them physically, but also affects them mentally four times a month. You really married four different women. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And women, it's okay. It's okay to understand that you're different. You don't have to be like a male. Any male that wants you to be like him, they don't understand you, okay? So what happens is there's your four changes. So there's, you're different every single week. But that means your exercise routine has to change every week. Mm. So let's call it the rough average day of a cycle, let's say is 28. Yes, ladies, you can fluctuate from 26, 29, or 20, 32, but let's do this. Let's just say on a 28 basis to make my point. Week, day one is when you menstruate. That first week, guess what? That's where you put in more of your, your, your non-burst training, okay? Yoga, walking, just stay active. You have to stay active. Mo movement is so important. But the idea is this, if you burst train, especially in that first week, you are going to deplete your hormones, your body's going to end up putting a ton of cortisol to compensate, and you can even gain weight. Mm -hmm. So when you menstruate, don't be putting your ex exercise at a high level, because what happens is, yes, you can develop a great physique. You know, this actually frustrates women. Women are not supposed to have a six pack. They're yeah. not. See, women actually get all excited, and they, they look at these women, and they, they show their six pack, and I look, and I go, that's a sick woman because she's actually deplete, depleted uh, uh, her layer of fat that's supposed to be there that produces hormone. Mm. And then eventually she's gonna get very sick, very depressed, and actually there's gonna be a lot of hormone problems that stem from there, okay? Now you move into week two, menstruation's done, hit it hard. You know, one yep. of the best things. And, and one of the best things that actually high, have high activity, and guys are gonna love this part of it that way, that includes sex. Do you know what I'm saying? It's a good burst training, you know? Yep. <laughs> and so what happens is this. So move into your burst training during a time. Week three, week three guys, is where women actually make probably the most chronic illness they have. Because hormones have to be the highest. Mm. They have to be. And if they're mentally stressed out and they're pushing their body to high extremes, that third week they'll deplete their hormones, 
It'll cause more illness in a woman than anything in history. So week, week three is when men should be, you know, buying their 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 significant others spa packages That's right. and giving them foot massages. Make the bath for them. Fanning them and feeding them grapes, That's the right. whole thing. Well, and I always say this in my hormone connection seminar, week three we call that the woman zone. Guys, you have to understand, this is where a woman has to have very little stress in her life. And if they do not, guess what? You can you can laugh, you can disagree, everything like that, but you want something? Infertility, PCOS, every hormone problem, depression, all time high. Yeah. So, and, and if we don't change our thinking, and so that's why clinically what we started to do now is this we start to test women during those times. And that's the big key. Ladies, each one of you guys are so different out there. You know, we have, we have beautiful women here and every, uh, here like crazy, but each one of these women are different. Mm -hmm. So we got to test them to see what their body needs and how to do it. Yeah, so just understanding that your body is cyclical in nature, women. It's mm -hmm. important. Again, that first week of menstruation, you should be doing yoga, yes. walking and hiking outside, getting sun, just doing things that are very active and movement oriented, but not super physically taxing. Mm -hmm. Doing that the first and third week of the month, and then the second and fourth, hey, going hard at it, doing burst training, yes. doing some weight training, doing some things that are physically exerting, but really knowing your body is cyclical and exercising in such a way is really a key to naturally balancing your hormones. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna dive in here and now talk about toxicity. This is a big topic, but by the way, I see we've got people joining from all over the world right now. I wanna say thanks for everybody who's joining us live here on this live training. I'm talking here to Dr. Patrick Flynn. He's known as the Hormone Whisperer. Hey, if you wanna learn more about him, just do a Google search online, open a new tab now and look up uh, the Hormone Whisperer, Dr. Patrick Flynn. You can learn about his clinic. Or, yeah, the Wellness Way Clinics is probably the easiest way to actually search us. Yeah, and he has people flying from all over the world to help them address hormone imbalance and infertility, some yes. things we're talking about today. And men actually deals with a lot of men with low testosterone mm -hmm. levels, helping lay out plans for them as well. All right, so let's talk about toxicity. Mm -hmm. How do toxins play a role? Let's also maybe talk about detoxification yep. here. And let's talk, talk about this whole, whole area. Well, you want to think about it this way. The, the whole endocrine system is a, is a pattern that changes. As we, we, women know, they cycle. Men do cycle too. Men cycle through the day. Their testosterone levels is higher in the morning than it is at night. Uh, ladies, you know how you can find out? Tomorrow morning before your husband's awake, lift up the sheet. You know what I'm saying? His hormones are high in the morning. It's out of his control. Okay, and I love that all the ladies laugh when I say that, but it's true. See, so we do have that cyclic pattern. That whole cyclic pattern can be disrupted by toxins. Mm. Let me give you a, a very sad female example. Once again, had a young lady come in, for example, that thought she was going through menopause in her 30s because what happened is she went to her doctor, she got a flu vaccine, and her cycle stopped. Do you see what I'm saying? Wow. Because heavy metals can disrupt the pituitary and disrupt the whole endocrine system, and of course, she stopped menstruating that way. And so, and then we start to detox her and stuff. And then once again, her cycle started to come on. So there's a lot of things that cause massive toxins. I mean, plastics. Don't drink out of plastic. I mean, just uh, use glass cookware. You know, I, um, you know, don't use, don't store your food in things that actually can have a BPA, all those endocrine disruptors. If you look at all the phytoestrogens that are out there today, you know what I'm saying? Um, I know there's a big controversy because they don't test. What happens is this, people actually love soy. And I'm sitting there going, soy is an endocrine disruptor. Actually, even if you look at the, the breast cancer websites uh, that are even medical, they'll tell you stay away from soy. Um, so be very careful with things that are endocrine disruptors because they're really toxins to the whole system to coordinate all this. Yeah, and one of the tips I know you and I have both given people, Dr. Patrick, is one of the other big things for women is, hey, eat meat, but make sure it's Ooh. organic and wild. Yes. Here's a big thing, conventional meat and dairy, we know they are packed with steroids and yep. growth hormones. In fact, there's a study out of Spain that, that I had read saying the average glass of milk has 21 pharmaceuticals in it from yep. estradiol, yep. other hormone mimickers, things that can really disrupt the hormones. So again, women, only organic, yep. wild, natural meats and dairy when you're consuming those. Stay away from the soy. We're not going to get into genetically modified foods because yeah. it would be a whole, whole we'd stuff. go for an hour, but stay away from GMOs, stay away from plastic containers, use glass, use stainless steel, use cast iron when you're cooking, switch over there. Yep. And I want, I want to talk about this. Here's something that, that a lot of people don't know is an endocrine disruptor, but it's classified as one, birth control pills. Oh, huge. Birth control pills are known as an endocrine disruptor, but here's one thing, guys. This is where a lot of men don't understand. 
I, I can actually get a man to stop his wife taking birth control from, from a very easy thing. If you touch your wife, and, or if you have sex with her, or you, you kiss her, guess what happens? You can transfer that birth control hormone to your husband. Mm. Do you understand? It's passive diffusion that way. And so therefore, guys, if you're, you're, your wife is taking this toxin, this endocrine disruptor, you're getting it. There's a lot of times that I will test guys, and their levels will be very elevated. I'm like, are you taking any steroids or any, any illegal drugs? Wow. Like, no. Like, then your wife is, she's like, he's like, how'd you know that? I'm like, because she's passing it to you. Yeah. And so those are big disruptors. And our number one source, this is, this is well documented, and, and you can go, go read this about WebMD. The number one source where people, even if they don't take birth control, public water systems. Because there's no filtration to actually get it out. So in the wow. city, a woman pees, it goes to the water treatment plant, it goes right back out to the water. So don't drink public from a public water system. You know, Dr. Patrick, these are huge tips. So this is public water here. Yep. Again, make sure you get a filter, whether it's reverse osmosis or uh, some type of filter in your house. Yep. You know, I want to mention this as well. I, I was doing, I was leading a uh, training yesterday, and someone asked a question, what are the side effects of birth control pills? One of the things people also don't know mm -hmm. is that it actually leaches vitamins and minerals from mm -hmm. the body. In fact, it's probably the number one medication that robs your body of all of your B vitamins, mm -hmm. including folate, yep. which is critical for neural development mm -hmm. of an infant, yep. uh, of, a, of a fetus. And so again, the side effects of birth control also... I've had so many women I've taken care of with candida issues. Mm -hmm. Once they got off birth control, yeast in candida went like, just grew like crazy. So this drug actually causes, within Chinese medicine, it's called dampness yep. within your body. So again, as Dr. Patrick's telling you, I can tell you as well from a clinical perspective, these things are big. Now let's talk about some things people can do and be proactive with healing their hormones, balancing out their body, Dr. Patrick. What are some of the key nutrients people need to start to balance out their hormones? This, this surprises people the most. Actually, I know it's so simple, but remember, water by far is the, our most number one nutrient. Yeah. Number two, salt. Salt is key for hormonal development that way. salt there. Yep. And then number three, for example, magnesium. Uh, magnesium is so important for the uterus. And that's why you'll see a lot of people use magnesium just to even calm uh, menstrual cramps down that way. Magnesium is very part. Now there's actually another thing that surprises people when I talk about this because it's actually essential for actually implantation uh, from the egg and development egg onto the uterus. Uh, cannabinoids, CBDs. Wow. CBDs. And that's why, for example, um, CBDs are so important to our body. Actually, it's interesting because there's CBDs, cannabinoids, in breast milk. Okay, there's CBDs in, all, in, in, in a lot of food substance. There's CBDs, well, for example, in echinacea. Wow. And a lot of people echinacea. don't know that. Echinacea is actually known as the poor man's marijuana. Okay. okay? Obviously, the most known uh, substance to actually produce CBDs is actually marijuana. Hemp is a, a fantastic. Mm. You can get CBDs from, from hemp that way. So, yeah, it's, uh, these, are, these are key nutrients that yeah. way. They're, they're essential, actually, for not only fertility, but just even normal cycles. Now, one of the things you and I were talking earlier, we talked about how great hemp seeds are mm -hmm. for women to add into smoothies. So yes. one of the ways to get several of these things, do two tablespoons every morning as part of a we, – we love bone broth, too. Yeah. Do some bone broth. Uh, a protein powder that comes from bone broth, some healthy fats like coconut milk, but add a couple tablespoons of hemp seeds yep. to your smoothie every single morning. They also contain the fatty acid GLA, which we yep. know is great for hormones. Yep. Great tips there. Uh, I want to mention here B vitamins too, you know, making sure, and you're going to get those. We had one question for you, mm -hmm. Dr. Patrick. What do I do diet-wise if I'm a vegan? Okay. Well, actually, that's not really that terrible because... Okay. When, um, let's go back even to cholesterols and things like that. Yeah. Um, if you look at some of your best protein sources, obviously meat sources you know, are very good that way. But hemp, spirulina are probably the two best protein sources that lead to there. Um, and, and, I, and I love those things to actually do it. You don't need meat sources. Now, that's one thing a lot of people freak out about that people don't realize. You can go without meat and be healthy. It's just much more difficult. Oh, it's you tough. Better be, you better be really good at man, and it becomes more of a management than it does anything. That's why having some wild game and things like that are much easier to get their sources that way. So, but there are wonderful superfoods. See, a lot of people realize a food gives you nutrients, but a superfood actually can actually create biochemical reactions. Mm. And see, that's why when you look at hemp, hemp's a superfood. Spirulina is a superfood that way. Cacao, chocolate's a superfood. Oh, yeah. Okay, cacao actually has cannabinoids in there. 
So being a vegan, you can do this very easy that way. It just remember, move towards the things, for example, that are easy to replace, and that's our superfoods. Love it. Great advice. Well, let's talk about herbs now. We love, we're going to talk about herbs, the best foods, and the best essential oils here. And if you're loving this live video, as I am here with Dr. Patrick Flynn here, the Hormone Whisperer, take a minute right now, punch the share button, click the like button, help us spread the word mm -hmm. that food is medicine, you know, and the real ways to get to the root cause of hormone imbalance, infertility, PCOS, and even low testosterone, these hormone issues. Uh, thanks everybody for being on mission with thank us. You. I see everybody sharing this right now on thank my you, phone. Thank you. All right, so let's talk about herbs. One we've talked about was Shisandra. Let's talk about that. Well, Shisandra is actually known as one of the most longevity herbs for a woman. But here's the big key. The herbs really, for example, once again, help with support to the whole endocrine system that way. But going back to even cholesterol that way, all of your hormones, even though produced by the ovaries and adrenals that way, they go to the liver and they go through processes within the liver mm. to actually convert from one form to another. To change estrogen, you need methyl groups. That's why methyl Bs do a wonderful job. Okay, and we're gonna get to a couple of the foods that way, but Cassandra is one of the very few herbs that change all functions of the liver that way. So it's, well, that's why it's one of the most important things. Um, like you said, milk thistle writing down. Milk thistle is essential. That's why detoxing for a woman is extremely important even compared to a man. Ladies, does this frustrate you? Because I know you guys are like, you never notice this, that your husband can actually stop drinking soda and he loses 20 pounds and actually you stop drinking soda and you gain five pounds, okay? Because what that happens, it comes down to the liver. And mm. what happens is women need to actually start to clear that liver out. That's why detoxing is so essential for female hormone health. Wow. It really is. And things like milk thistle, cisandra, and turmeric actually open up those pathways, allow things to convert. And once again, this can be tested for. It's a wonderful thing to do. It's essential, women. If you haven't detox, guess what? You need to. Otherwise, your hormones cannot convert into the forms they need to be. Yeah, so if you've never heard of Shisandra, this is one of the sort of core mm -hmm. herbs used within traditional Chinese medicine. Yep. Um, we don't milk this. So I want to mention, this was a huge point that Dr. Patrick just said. We tend to think of our liver as this just takes care of environmental toxins. It produces cholesterol. Yep which we talked about how important that is for your body and for your hormones. We know your liver actually is probably the chief organ for balancing out estrogens and getting rid of phyto and xenoestrogens from those plastics and other chemicals you have in your body. So again, taking care of your liver women is probably one of the most important organs in regards to your fertility mm -hmm. that you can be taken care of. So we, go, we know milk thistle is great for that. There's actually another great Chinese herb, buplerum, mm -hmm. tends to be great for that. So this is great advice here. Let's talk about what are some of the top, we talked about some foods, mm -hmm. what are a few more foods that are great for infertility and hormones? Well, I'm going to actually, um, uh, Doc, you didn't know I was going to do this today, but uh, I didn't tell him about this, but it's not a joke. My favorite food right now, for example, is Dr. Josh's bone, bone protein. Okay. okay. Now let me explain why. And see, I've been saving this just for our video today. Got, you always got to you know, do a couple things that are kind of fun. So what happens is, as, we, as I can teach you right now, mental stress will drain a woman's hormones faster than anything. The second thing that actually makes women's hormones drop faster than anything is gut issues. Oh, Gut issues. Yes. Because any time there's an immune reaction within the gut, the body searches for cortisol. Well, cortisol converts into our, converts into our cortisol. Mm. Progesterone converts into our cortisone. So GI inflammation will damage it. Leaky gut will damage it and it'll cause so much inflammation, ladies, it will drain your hormones. So once again, and then the cool thing about his bone broth protein is not only is it going to help with leaky gut, but it's also going to give us the amino acids and all of the, the things that we need to actually support with the cholesterol to be able to do it. Mm. So it's one of our favorite foods. It's why we ask our patients, take a scoop of it a day. Do you understand? Because wow. then you're covering two aspects. You're causing one of the causal factors, but then you're giving the body the food it needs to actually build up the hormone levels. Um, I love beets. Love beets. Okay, Beet juice, for example, should be essential for actually hormone uh, growth and development. As, as a, a beet has a lot of methyl groups. Okay, Methyl groups are very important, especially in cancers, because what happens is when the, the estrogens are formed, com, conform from one form to the other, if they don't convert properly, they'll, certain levels will start to rise. The methyl groups actually attach them and convert and rid them out of the liver that way. And so that's why it's very key. I love beets that way. Uh, and, then, and then we get to the food again, spirulina and hemp. There we spirulina go. and hemp, two essential foods that way. You, you, know, you can get these anywhere. It's, it's actually fantastic. So those would be my four top foods 
you know, for example, for people to do that way. But uh, um, obviously, is there more? Yes. But those four, if you want to take a, a step actually making your hormones the right direction, wonderful foods to implement in right away. I love it. Great advice. Or one of the things people don't know about bone broth, which is one of the things you just mentioned and mm -hmm. told everybody, is that it also contains an amino acid called glycine, mm -hmm. which is critical for liver function and contains proline and hydroxyproline, mm -hmm. critical for gut repair. And one of the things I want to I mention here, I was reading a study this week, Dr. Patrick, that said if you, most of us get too, actually probably too much muscle meat in our diet, not enough uh, amino acids rich in glycine, and glycine actually increased lifespan. Mm -hmm. I mean, just really mm -hmm. incredible looking at its benefits. Let's talk now about essential oils. By the way, thanks everybody who's sharing this information on mission with us. Thank we you. know that this information can help transform the lives of millions of men and women who are struggling with infertility, women with PCOS, men with low testosterone. And I'm here with Dr. Patrick Flynn, the Hormone Whisperer. If you want to learn more about him, you can just do a Google search for Hormone Whisper, Dr. Patrick Flynn, and he owns clinics the Wellness Way, and he's out of Wisconsin. Green Bay, and, Wisconsin. And has people fly from all over the world to come see him to get help with hormones. All right, so let's talk about essential oils. What are your favorite essential oils for balancing hormones and fertility? Uh, patchouli, number one. Okay. Uh, patchouli, to me, for example, and even if you go back to its history, it's actually known as a as an endocrine increaser that way. It's a, and it's an adaptogen. So I love patchouli, for example. I love lemon. Lemon is one of the we we we've, we've lost because lemon's so prevalent in our culture that way. We lost the medicinal benefit of it that way, and how amazing it's for us that way. And then thyme. Those three, for example, are are probably my three favorite that way. And the, and it's actually in that order. Love it. Patchouli, lemon, and thyme, those three essential oils. And you know, typically the way that you can use these oils, now, do you recommend topically or internally, or how Both. do you have your... See, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm a big component of actually orally. Yep. You're saying, I am. I, I know a lot of people put it in the drum. I like it being diffused. We have diffusers in our offices like crazy. Yep. You can actually rub them on your skin, no doubt. But actually, the, you know, the, the essential oil, if you really look at an herb, for example, that comes from the root, okay? The oil also comes from a plant. It can be ingested. And the nice thing is, for example, it's much more absorbable here than it is on our skin. Mm. It, yep. and it absorbs well through our skin, but orally, for example, you get a, a much quicker. And because there's neurological receptors on our, on our, in our oral cavity that way that can create an endocrine response quickly. That's why I like them to be done orally. I love it. You know, one of the things I love here about thyme oil as well, it's a pro-progesterone, mm -hmm. which actually men oftentimes are low in progesterone mm -hmm. too. So again, great for that. So guys, we've covered a lot of information here. You know, just to simplify, I, I want to walk through a few final things here as well. By the way, if you're not subscribed here to our uh, you know, to, to our live feed, make sure you subscribe here to our channel. We got a lot more great content information coming out. But a few things just to run down here, as Dr. Patrick talked about, you want to test when mm -hmm. you, in order for you to really find out some of the root cause of what's going on, it's really important to test. It's not just estrogen. There are multiple types of estrogens that you want to get tested for. Cholesterol is critical for balancing your hormones. Listen, Cholesterol is good. Cholesterol plus protein equals your hormones. Mm -hmm. If you have low cholesterol, it will harm or could harm your fertility and your hormones. Get not conventional eggs, but mm -hmm. you know, go to your farmer's market, those bright orange yolks, that's what you want. Eggs, avocados, tallow, coconut. We talked about with mental stress, doing California poppy along with lavender and things like that to relax the body, some fatty acids. Here are some of the top foods to get macadamia nuts, walnuts, flax seeds, and salmon. Uh, exercise. Now, this was something I think really eye-opening for a lot of people, Dr. Patrick. Mm -hmm. That first week of, the, of, of menstruation, you want to do yoga and walking mm -hmm. and hiking. You don't want to really physically exert yourself. So week one and three, you want to rest or do more yoga and walking mm -hmm. outside. Hey, weeks two and four, go for it. It's weight training, it's burst training, it's exerting yourself more. We talked about getting rid of the toxins, especially birth control and public water where some of the chemicals are hidden. We talked about all of these nutrients you need, herbs, foods, essential oils. I know this seems like a lot, but what I would do is take this information and just write down a plan. Number one, number one piece of advice, change your breakfast. You know, mm -hmm. Start doing that superfood smoothie with some bone broth and hemp seeds and spirulina. You know, Make that superfood smoothie every single morning. Start incorporating just a few of these things at a time in your daily schedule. And hey, if you want more help, hey, we've got some great articles on DrAxe.com. Mm -hmm. You can look up DrAxe, 
PCOS, Dr. Rack's hypothyroidism, Dr. Rack's infertility. We have some articles that goes in depth on some of these things. And also, if you want to work with a practitioner, hey, check out Dr. Patrick Flynn. Just Google search Dr. Patrick Flynn Hormone Whisper. He resides in Wisconsin, but sees people from all over the world. And Dr. Patrick, this has been a great training on hormones. Thanks, man. Love having you in. Hey, thanks guys for watching live. We'll be back again here later this week with some more live trainings.